So my name is Hazel Chu. I am the 352nd Lord Mayor of Dublin City. It is great to have everyone here today and have our uh, announce our winners of uh, this category of the Lord Mayor Youth Awards. So as some of you may know, Lord Mayors in the city normally have a set of awards, which is the Lord Mayor Awards, and uh, they, they're, they're usually adult-based. So there's been some that's been awarded to younger people. But what I've noticed this year is that uh, with changing the awards to every month, that we didn't celebrate young people as much as we should because a lot of young people have been getting a lot of flack during the pandemic uh, and not enough credit so what we thought of here in the office was that we have a special category for uh, the Lord Mayor Awards which we would be the Lord Mayor Youth Awards and this morning we had five winners uh, six including Adam uh, from the ages of five to twelve category and uh, this afternoon we're going to be announcing the secondary school category from 13 to 18 or well 12 to 18 sorry uh, and uh, a big congratulations again to our award winners this morning of James, Tia, Tara, um, Patrick and Mia and Adam as well and we move on today to this afternoon session so uh, we'll Part of this webinar is also to talk a bit about uh, the challenges we've all had to face during the pandemic, hearing it from your side as well, uh, from, from uh, younger people. So we have Brezzi that will be uh, talking about mental health because he's a director of a mental health uh, organization. And then after that, uh, it would be great if anyone would like to contribute from the audience or uh, from the nominees, anyone at all, uh, put up your hand after that, um, that section to, uh, 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 to let Simon know that you would like to contribute and maybe talk about how yourselves have gone through the pandemic and how you have kept yourselves mentally well and physically as well. Uh, the whole session is supposed to be more of a chat. We're going to announce the winners, but we're going to have a chat about all things to do with young people and the challenges we face. So we are delighted this year to acknowledge the achievements um, of, of um young people in our city. We had 124 nominations in total, and every single one of them were incredible. Like reading through them, Miriam and my, uh, myself had to read through them, and there were some really, really uh, amazing contributions. Everyone who, who nom got nominated, got nominated for a, a great reason. And the five winners that we will choose, uh, that we have chosen and announced this afternoon, will tell you what they did during the pandemic and the contribution they did. So we'll have a little chat with the five winners later on. And as I said, it's been an incredibly tough year for everyone. It's been particularly tough for young people who haven't been able to go into the classroom um, during most of the year and who haven't been able to see their friends and who've just been locked up at home. So a big thank you to you all and um, a massive well done to you all for your resilience. So, um, so we're going to move on to talk to some of the secondary school uh, um, uh, um, young people that we met uh, with um, one of our camera crews this week. So I'm going to move to the video of Clotter Road and uh, McCris Park College and Colossia Owen in Inglis uh, to uh, talk about some of the issues during the pandemic. The biggest thing for me I struggled with was motivation. Because, just because of like, not because of not being around friends or teachers or anything, it's that where, where I would do my work is in my own room. So it's just, it's very hard to push yourself to keep doing the work. Getting up for school, that was, that was hard. And then going on to it and all, and then you're just like, it's boring, you know? Like, there's no teachers in front of you to teach and just, like, don't want to screen too hard to learn. See, I have really strict parents, so I couldn't go out at all. And when the last lockdown happened, I was kind of in like a state of, what am I going to do? Like, I can't stay in this, because I share a room with a brother. And it's just, it was draining, in a way. I mean, Annie used to come down, like, she'd come down like every two weeks, and she'd just stand this side of my house, like talking to us, out the garden. Because she can't, like she, like, she can't come near anybody, obviously, because she wants to, like, be safe. You know, because I used to go to the gym when I were open, like, three to four times a week. And it was just, you know, my daily routine, part of my lifestyle. And since the gym's closed, there really isn't anything else. It was a bit hard, like, because like, there's young kids in the house, so getting up in the mornings and 
then trying to watch everyone like so no one comes in and out while you're doing our meetings and all that like, was stressful and like I was alright for the first few weeks but it just went down and down. Having that uncertainty in the junior sort of not knowing and kind of taking it upon yourself to just okay I'll sit down and I'll do a bit of max now just in case you know and um, that was probably a good thing to learn during lockdown just to kind of say for myself I'll do this um, but it was difficult if I do you know whatever I meant to do study for a little bit you know and I can maybe help out with my sister because they're all working and you know I'm in secondary I know that's important but you know they have other things to do and I was like yeah it'll be fine I can do this I had to like mind my little brothers and sisters a lot because I had to go out um, I feel like I can kind of adapt to harder um, situations better like I know how to cope with things I know how to yeah make myself feel better when I'm a bit down we get to like spend more time with your family if like that's all like if you're at home all the time then you can spend time with your family as well yeah like my dad sells flags and all in town for the matches and all like so when Cove actually started like that died down so he started doing bingos and all to try actually bring the community back together like I think I've definitely gotten a lot closer with my family and just even more like value for being at home and having people to like talk to you and like even just going out in walks and getting fresh air. That's like obviously since COVID people have lost people like you know obviously people have realised now like we can't really take the life for granted anymore and like you know we're kind of starting to be a bit more kind. big thank you to the te uh, teachers and especially the students of um, Clara Road Community College, Muckers Park uh, College and Colossia Owen uh, Fingerless who allowed us to film in the schools and I think you hear from bits uh, and pieces of, from people there that it's been exceptionally hard for everyone. It's been exceptionally hard for young people and it's also why seeing some of the nominations come true, it, it shows how amazing and awesome uh, uh, young people are because like a lot of people will argue that young people have been hit the hardest the stress of anxiety of whether exams will go ahead as we heard there the homeschooling of having to stare at the screen every day missing out on time with your friends not being able to see your grandparents or or, or other family and it's just that stress of not knowing and not knowing what will happen during COVID so I have to say um, like I, I absolutely am in awe of everyone here, especially the uh, people nominated and the people in the video there, because it, there's a lot of credit that has to be given to yourselves and you are the next generation that, that will uh, end up uh, um, running this country. So, so I, I have to say it, it's, it's a testament to yourselves of the amazing things that you have done. And it's been, it's been a year like no other. It's been a really challenging and awful year. So it, it, it's given us time to reflect. And one of the uh, people we, we got on board to talk to ourselves, uh, to talk to everyone during this uh, webinar is Niall Bresnan, who um, knows a lot about mental health and well-being and is the director of Lust for Life. And um, some of you may know him as Brezzy. So we wanted to talk to him and uh, get his thoughts on young people of how they feud, um, what he would recommend and suggest. So just a quick uh, uh, chat with Brezzy. What, what I mean by that, it, it hasn't been a pretty year. It's been grim, it's been tough. And the reality is when, you, you know, when you're young, you're a kid and you get sick, uh, your immune system kicks in and it helps you deal with it. Uh, and you know, back in the day when I was growing up in the eighties, like every Irish mummy wanted to throw you straight in an antibiotic to, to help you. And some Irish mummy was like, no, let your immune system do its job. And we have a psychological immune system too. And life isn't easy sometimes. Life isn't pretty sometimes. It is not a straight line. And this is probably, this is as tough as a guess for a lot of people because we've taken so much from people that makes us human, interaction, connection. These are so crucial to every human being on earth. So the point I'm trying to say is as tough as this has been, it's lived experience. And lived experience is a very special type of resilience and psychological flexibility you might not know it, but you've gained an inordinate level of, of just internal resilience, just dealing with the normality of a difficult year. It's been so difficult for everybody. Like I've struggled with it as well. And, you know, we've all these self-help books and self-help apps and all these inspirational memes. They don't really mean a lot. When you live it, when you go through it, it's a very special type of resilience. And there's going to be other 
stuff you're hit with in life because that's life and you're going to find yourself better able to deal with it just like your immune system can deal with sickness your head will be able to deal with the next curve you know issue that gets thrown your way in life to be honest i've noticed a lot of young people rise uh, to the challenge as well like there's been so many that that uh, I've seen and it's a huge credit to them it's why we set up this this webinar and these awards to, to kind of hear the thoughts because a lot of young people get a lot of flack but they also deserve a lot of the credit they, they've been mm-hmm. actually people that uh, have have pulled us through Let's, like you're you're the director as I said of, of mental health charity lust for life like what are the common uh, causes you see to stress and anxiety in young people today and um, what would you have them to to try to how to combat those there there's there's a a myriad of issues in front of young people at the moment and the difference being in the 80s and 90s when I grew up and I went through my teenage years with quite a a rampant and severe panic disorder uh, no one knew what it was nobody had language for it the only mental health education I ever had was when my hero died Kurt Cobain and my teacher called him a coward and punched my desk No one had language to describe this human response that we all deal with. And I used to think I had severe asthma because I couldn't breathe. I used to fight for breath. And I remember going into hospital and the doctor telling me that it wasn't asthma, it was puberty. And being so deflated by that because I knew something wasn't right. And that was, that's where the damage happens with mental health. When you don't have the language to describe it, when you cannot express yourself about it, where you feel that you'll be stigmatized if you do, The silence is the problem because the reality is, and I'll I'll be 100% honest with you, I've been doing this work for eight years. Once you start getting the adequate help, everything, it it does work. It works. And that's why I'm so passionate about good therapy and access to good therapy. So for young people today, I I had less fear around mental health because they know what it is and they can express it. My fear a little bit around young people at the moment is they're, they're dealing with a lot more than I would have had to deal with in the 80s and 90s. There's much more coming at them. There's much more issues. There's much more information. There's much more challenges. And we have to figure out how to deal with this because our brains aren't designed for this. It's too fast. It's too much. And there's a many, many issues we see with young people when it comes to stress and anxiety. We know body image is a massive problem. And the people that we, we see as icons and influences in our world, you know, you know and nothing against the Kardashians, but they've created a, a kind of a form of something that has made this really deeply difficult. And the best way to describe it without coming across patronizing Lord Mayor is when I was a teenager, I don't know how I would have dealt with this. I don't know how I would have functioned with all of this coming at me. What I'll say to young people now, uh, my academic background is actually economics. I'm well aware of how a country works, but the way we judge a society shouldn't be off economics and GDP. They're very blunt instruments. The way to judge a society is in how we treat our most vulnerable and ask yourself, are we doing a good enough job in Ireland? Because I don't think we are. No, um, we're, we're not. And this is, this is the funny thing, like uh, j- just hearing you say this, because I think a lot of what we have now, as you said, is driven by young people. They've been the ones that have been driving the causes like fighting discrimination. They've been the ones driving climate change. And they, they've been the ones getting us to this point. And my worry right now is how do we make sure we support them? Because when you talk about the most vulnerable, I look across all categories, looking from uh, women's health to our mental health to young people. And what can we do to support them? And what, what should we be doing? The first thing we can do to support young people, in my, ability, my opinion, is to listen. A prime example is the, the Leaving Cert tobacco. The only stakeholders that weren't actually addressed were the most important stakeholders, and that was the young people. Decisions were being made on their behalf. And then we were dismissing the leaving cert as something that's not that. I still wake up in cold sweats, freaking out that Yates didn't come up in my leaving cert. I still have nightmares about it. It's an immensely difficult period, and it's a very testing period, and we shouldn't diminish it in any way. And I think that was just a prime example of the... I, I, did, I hosted a, a chat with leaving cert students, quite a lot of them. And the first thing I said is, Please understand the power you have. You are voters. You're about to go into the voting world, a lot of you. And if you want to change anything in politics, remember that, unfortunately, generally within Western politics, the core of politics is the preservation of power. So how do we get that power? And how do we jump on things that will help us get that power? And and there's good politicians out there with big hearts who care greatly. But I do believe the political system is about how do we get power? 
And I think young people need to understand they have power now. And my job is to empower them to know that is that you drive the change that you want to see. But we need to start like taking our own personal accountability and figuring out what, what we want to see from this world, this country. We're asking a lot of young people to be resilient during this time and to build that resilience. Like what, like how is it possible to, 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 to I guess, advise them to, to build that resilience during this awful time? From your work, how have you been able to advise people? Listen, there's a lot, like you just talked about patience and understanding there. Like how do we build resilience for, for never mind young people, for ourselves? express your emotion. The good, the bad, the ugly. We have eight core emotions and most of them are negative ones. And since I was a child and no doubt you were a child, we were always told to not be scared, not to be anxious, not to be sad. Experience it all, the, the, the full spectrum of emotion. Life isn't a straight line. And, and I've learned that the hard way, unfortunately. I, I wanted my life to be easy and simple and straight line. It wasn't. And it was, I spent 15 years of my life um, repressing uh, literally the very core of me. And that was that I, I struggled massively to function through all my careers. And until I learned to express how I was feeling and actually not make excuses for it. Right now, for example, you could go online and you could see 5,000 inspirational quotes telling you to, you know, to look in the... If you just want to go out and scream at birds today and have a meltdown, have it, express it. You know, but be really careful that you express it the right way and understand that not everyone's intention is to hurt you. Look past their behaviors and the words, maybe they were hurt too, and that is empathy. These aren't hashtags, Hazel. We have to stop thinking kindness as a hashtag. It's not, it's a value. It's what you believe in. It's how you act, it's a behavior. I don't care about hashtags. They're worthless, they're meaningless. That's not real life. Connect with people hit their humanity and you'll be very surprised when you take that conversation off the online world that we all are connected in some way it's the buddhist psychologies and philosophies that we're all intrinsically linked we all share the same light we breathe the same air we all need each other and if we keep fragmenting each other and keep creating this ridiculous binary society we're just going to be shouting at each other from two sides of a room and nothing's going to change yeah, I, I laughed her because um, I had my little scream this morning and I also uh, took it out on the punch bag. So I think this is the... <laughs> Would you believe I just bought a punch bag for my new... I, 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 before I came on this call, I, I, I screwed it to the wall and my mate is worth helping me. He goes, why did you buy that? I says, given the work that I do every now and again, I just have to go down there for 20 minutes and start swinging. Yep. And it feels so. brilliant. And that's it. It's just release. They, they won't let me attach anything to walls here in this house, folks. But uh, so I bought a freestanding one, and it's actually it's been brilliant. So, like to to the point that myself and Brezzy are making there, you, you need an outlet, and make sure you have that outlet. And um, and and it's not the world against anyone, and it, sometimes it does. It sometimes it feels like the world is against you, but a lot of the times it's not. And whatever way you can work out that anger, that, that, that frustration and that fear, sometimes it's fear that like work it out on, on, on whichever way you, you can. Uh, Brezzy, I, I want to come to kind of why we're having this webinar. We're having this to celebrate young people, to look at some of the extraordinary things they've done, especially during the pandemic. What have you seen this year from, uh, from young people um, that, that you think has been incredible and that you, you will say, keep on doing to people? I think it's time to start putting our value on things that really matter, like the lady down who served me my dad's paper every day for 12 months at eight o'clock, never took a day off work in the middle of the pandemic, our frontline staff. I think what I've noticed with young people is they've started to understand what really makes a community and makes a society. And it isn't, and we need a bit of escapism and we need crap TV and we need all that stuff, but we really should stop putting them on ridiculous pedestals. They're human beings with flaws just like us. And I think I'm outrageously impressed with young people throughout this pandemic and I'm outrageously annoyed at the fact that they were for a period of time used as a scapegoat because they're like you know I think they've shown an outrageous level of resolve and, and also you know of course there's going to be blocks where people just had enough and they, they, they the guidelines went out the window but really when you break it down how the vast majority of young people went, right, we got to do this. It's horrible. And we got we to gotta take them on the chin and figure out what to do. And we got to disconnect from each other, which is at the core of youth is connection. 
that's when you that's when you develop your values your character everything i am good bad or not was developed when i was 13 to 18 years of age with my friends and my family and i think it, it's a, it's what i would say to young people is please 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 do one thing use this time to ask yourself what are your values what do you stand for because they're your north star they're what will dictate every decision you ever make and when you get lost they're the things that will help you find your way again ask yourself what you stand for and live those values and i think young people should be immensely proud of themselves for going through what is whatever way you shape this our world war ii this is the this is the first time since world war ii where the global world has just been brought to its knees and the fear is the next time this happens it's when climate change goes past that point of, of and 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 there ain't no getting out of that one there's no getting out there's no vaccine that's going to save us there so i think it's time to understand that it's our world and our nature and our world has been there for us when we've needed it and now she needs us and we need to step up that's our next challenge um, I, I think young people have understood that challenge a lot more than uh, older ones to be honest I, I've noticed that in the last two years especially like we we look at Fridays for Futures we look at kind of the different mo- uh, campaigns and the protests that that were um, enacted by young people and they have been the ones driving it so it brings it home back to the fact that you talk about power and you talk about how young people have the power. I think a lot of them have been using that power and mm-hmm. a lot of them may feel really frustrated now in, in, in COVID times because they're not able to, to uh, exert a kind of that power. And hopefully we will come back to the stage where we will. But I'm also hoping that people will have cop on that older, our older generation, my generation and above will have some cop on and realize, well, listen, there was a reason uh, people were taking the streets. There was a reason young people were taking the streets every Friday and we have to start listening to them and maybe we will now. So like, I hope so. Hope, yeah, I'm going to wrap this up now. I think two things that I really want to ask. One is the grief aspect because so many young people have experienced grief during this time. Like you, you're, you, you've dealt with a lot of this um, from a work point of view. What, what is it that you would advise a young person who is coping with grief right now, um, for, for perhaps for the first time? So. Grief, yeah. And grief isn't just losing a loved one. I lost my uncle to COVID. Uh, I've gone through it. Um, I've lost friends. Grief is not just losing a loved one or a friend. It's losing away a life. It's losing a, a right to passage. And the most important part of grief, and I'll say this at every level, don't repress it. Don't internalize it. Don't push it inwards. Don't try to out gym it. Don't try to out train it. Don't try to out drink it. You can't. You have to express it. You need to find a way to express it. And you need to, you need to, as friends and peers, you need to learn to not be uncomfortable with other people's pain. So if somebody expresses pain to you, see that as a huge compliment. They trust you. You're a good person. Hold it, protect it. Uh, don't judge. That's, that's key. And, and that's the key, no matter what psychologist background or belief you have, express grief, express it. If you internalize it, if you push it inwards, it's going to come out somewhere. And you want to be able to control how it comes out. And I, I have a friend who, who, who actually is on the marathon mind journey with, uh, with my podcast, whereas my mind, she lost her husband to cancer at the start of this. And it's been the most cathartic thing just to say to her, let it literally purge yourself, let it out, express it, find somebody who lets you express it. And I, as a 40 year old man, am completely comfortable with anyone's pain. They can express what they want in front of me and I will never judge them. I will never see them as anything else, only human. And that's how you handle grief, in my opinion. Okay. Um, I guess we'll end on a slightly lighter note then. Uh, we, we talk about kind of true again true dissociation it's about celebrating young people it's about celebrating kindness and you emphasize kindness there as something that we we shouldn't just kind of look at as a hashtag it's something that needs to be embedded what is the nicest and kindest thing someone has ever done for you um i mean people have done amazing things for me but I, one that's really fresh and it was really simple was as i said my when my uncle passed away it, he we lived in glasgow so we couldn't go to the funeral and um I remember going out to the, my mum was hanging up clothes. It was her brother, like, and I just thought to myself how, how truly strange all this is. 
And the priest in Glasgow said that he would say mass for my uncle. Obviously, no one could go to the church, but he set up his little camera on YouTube and he did a YouTube mass. And it was one of the most beautiful days I've ever seen in Ireland. I mean, proper 30 degrees. And the funeral was at five or six o'clock in the evening. So I walked out, I went out to the lake out in Mullingar, where I, where I, where I live. And I started to watch the funeral on YouTube. And I put it on a rock and I was sitting by the, the lake. And at this point, we weren't allowed outside our 5K. And this was six or 7K from my house. And a guard goes up. And I'm like, oh, God. Like, and he came up to me. He goes, hey, sir, I was going to be really lovely. And he goes, everything all right? Can I mind me asking where, you know, where, you're, where you're traveling from? And I said, actually, I'm outside my fight, but I'm, I'm just at my uncle's funeral here. And he looked at me and he just laughed. And I laughed at him and he went, this is... This is crazy, isn't it? It's, and it was just pure humanity. We laughed like it was just, I'm at a funeral with a phone on YouTube on a rock at a lake, 7K from my house. And the two of us just, we just had that moment of like, man, this is nuts. And it was just lovely. And it was, it was, that was it. And he drove off and he said, anything you need, if you want me to drop out anything to you. And he drove off. And it was just the simplicity of that. And just the idea that both of us were like, this is crazy. And I think that kind of stuff, those simple things, I don't need big things to connect with people. Um, and that's just a, a kind of fresh kind of moment of kindness that uh, I've experienced. I've just bought a new house as well. And people, I've new, I've new neighbors, I've never met them. <laughs> They're just lining up to give me stuff and just say hello and burn the ear off me and I'm burning the ear off them. And that connection is all, it's really at the core of what makes to be a human. So that's what I'll say to people. Kindness is connection. Find people to connect to um, and express kindness. It's not, it's not a hashtag. And the next time you feel you want to rip someone apart online, take a moment, take a breath and ask yourself, maybe they're dealing with something right now. And I'm just adding to the noise. Thank you. Um, that was Brezzy. Uh, he heard we were doing Ordinary Awards and actually put his hand up to, to come and talk. So uh, thank you very much to him and his time. And now we're getting to announcing the five winners. I said in the chat there that if anyone wants to discuss any of the issues, mental health, uh, how we're doing during the pandemic, or if you want to just give your school a shout out uh, and comment on uh, how uh, you've done things differently in the pandemic, put your hand up. And at the end of when we announce the winners, after we talk to other winners we will co come to the school so feel free to put your hand up in the uh in the i think the participant participants bar you can virtually put your hand up and simon will uh, then spotlight you at the end um when we talk to the various classrooms so again uh, if you want to shout about anything if you want to call out anyone in your class or your teachers or if you want to talk about how uh, you've coped during the pandemic or um how you're feeling or how how you think uh, uh, think things can be done better so uh, please do uh, put your hands up and we want to hear from you at the end uh, so we're going to move on to to the awards now uh, as I said 128 of 24 uh, nominations uh, this is the first time we um, have carried out these awards in this office so it's been quite a it's been a massive pleasure I want to give Miriam Sinead and Orla a big shout out because Miriam were the ones, uh, was the one who actually organized all the uh, nominations and she read through all of them and I read through uh, them going, this is incredible. There, some of the work that yourselves have been doing uh, through the pandem pandemic um, is just amazing. So it kind of puts us all to shame. So we're going to announce the first winner uh, and they're not in order. It's just uh, picking out uh, the first one is 12 year old Jake Brannigan from Dublin 8. Jake, you've been described as a, being a pillar of strength to your mom, who not only underwent treatment for cancer two years ago, but earlier this year, she also suffered from COVID-19. It's fair to say that you are your mom's rock. Tell us how you've been through COVID. We've been sad because we met her at the start. So, and how have you, like, how, how, how have you been doing recently? Has it been better? Yeah, it got better. Oh. Um, I heard that you've been a very good neighbor to your elderly. Uh, uh, you've been a very good neighbor to your el elderly neighbors as well. What have you been doing for them? We've been asking them did they need anything in the shop. And you've been the one getting it for them as well, I heard. Yeah. 
and talking to them. Fair play. So how are they doing at the moment? Are they doing well? Yeah, they're doing good. So, and I also heard that you have been giving your uh, birthday and confirmation money to, to, to a charity? Yeah, to the homeless. I have to say, Jake, fair play. So uh, we chose you as one of the winners because you are absolutely amazing. So um, like, congratulations. And I want to say a big thank you from everyone here in the office and from, uh, from everyone uh, that has been working on these. So thank you so much, Jake. And uh, we will send you your award and your voucher on the way. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jake. Bye. So um, just so everyone knows, each winner will get a uh, specially commissioned uh, award and also a hundred euro one for all voucher. I would advise all winners to keep that to yourself and not give it to your parents. So, but that's entirely up to you. So we have the next winner who is uh, Shakira from Bali Permit, 17 euro Shakira. Hi Shakira. Hi. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, congratulations. You're in sixth year, I understand, and have been doing exceptionally well in, in uh, certain leadership skills. Tell me a bit about what you've been doing. Uh, I've organized school activities for our community, such as collecting goods for homeless. We got students and staff to contribute to those care packs and the wellbeing team created Christmas cards to include each care pack. I've also helped to coordinate activities for the wellbeing team at the school. We've done dancing challenges, walking challenges, and share positive messages with my school. I've enjoyed my role at my school and helping younger people to find happiness. And each Friday afternoon, what do you do? Uh, play a song and an inspirational quote. Fair play. So, and how has it been going? How have you been finding it in the last? you're doing all this? It's been very hard. Oh. And well, it, it has been, it has been really horrible and difficult, but I have to say your work has contributed so much to, to, to your school and your, your community as well. Like what, what, what do you want to see in the next couple of months? How do you feel going into the next few months? Uh, I just want to like be positive and all the students be possible as well in the school. Yeah, and I, I think you've been doing that. I heard you've been coordinating all the donations as well. And you've been, am I right to say that you also work with the local homeless um, outreach team? Yeah. What have you been doing with them? Uh, just making care packs for them and giving them supplies and all that they need. Okay, like honestly, Shakira, you're you're amazing. I, I know all the winners here and all the nominees are, are incredible, but I heard a lot about what you've been doing in terms of uh, recording tips and uploading on Facebook and and trying to share and positive messages around, but also helping on the ground to to the homeless outreach team and within your school. So a massive thank you from ourselves here, and you are absolutely incredible. And um, thank you so so much. Thanks. Thanks, Shakira. Uh, our next winner is uh, 14, year old, 14 years old and has come uh, uh, overcome serious uh, challenges when last year he faced a uh, life-threatening illness. We have uh, Dave Clark Ronello. Dave? Hello. Hi, how's it going? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, hello. <laughs> so I heard you were very sick for the last three months. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, yeah. And is that your class behind you that's <laughs> listening yeah. to us? Yeah. How has your classmate been helping? Um, uh, they've cheered me up after my operations. I was about to say, you can say they didn't help at all, but that wouldn't be very fair. <laughs> yeah. So, but tell me this, um, throughout, throughout your ordeal, one of your, the, the person who nominated you said that you, you have been really positive, you've been really enthusiastic, and you made um, the dad, your dad contact the school on multiple occasions to keep up with your work. So what, what have you, where did you get your strength from and how did you feel about that? Um, I got my strength from my parents um, being beside me all the time in the hospital. 
are they there at the moment or no, they're in school. So yeah. I, you can give them a shout out. Yeah, thank you, mom and dad. <laughs> so, uh, and I also noticed that you've been described as a shining example uh, by your classmates and by your school. Like, how have you found it to be resilient and pre persevere? Like, you got your strength from your mom and dad, but any other tips on how to kind of get through the challenges? Um, just stick through it. It'll get better eventually. Yeah, it will. So I, I know that's that's the thing. A lot of people always say it will get better and you kind of look at them and go, well, will you please just go away? But it does get better. And I have to say, Dave, um, thank you and uh, well done. So and also a massive congratulations. I know it's been horrendous and uh, it's incredible that you're sitting there with us and that someone said this is a, a great example of resilience and they were right. So uh, this person is a great example for resilience. So I have to say thank you, Dave, for your resilience and your persever uh, perseverance and um, thank you to your school as well and your parents. So congratulations. And yeah, thank you. Thank you. The la our next winner, oh, I think, sorry, I got this wrong for a second. Uh, our next winner is 16 and comes from Tala. We have Grace Ennis Hegarty. Are <laughs> you, you in your house by any chance? Yeah. <laughs> that's a whooping noise from your parents by any chance. Um, it's my mom, my aunt. Go on, go on. They can pan the camera. Yeah. You can all join in if you want. We can only hear voices. Are they camera shy? Ah, uh, they're all, they're in the back there. They're all right. She will let them in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wouldn't let them in don't worry they won't embarrass you too much uh, tell me tell me what you've been doing in transition year in kingswood community college actually kingswood was down the road from where i was from i uh, lived in Furhas. so you did something with your hair tell us what you did yeah um i cut 17 inches off my hair for the um rapunzel foundation and i done a go for me for the laura lynn which raised over 2,000 euro. Fair play. Uh, how long was your hair? Um, it was like down to, down all the way down my back. <laughs> okay, uh, that, that's, that's a lot of hair. And the reason you did it was because? Um, well, my granddad passed from cancer a few years ago. So that was like a reason behind it. And then a couple of months ago, my auntie just said to me, why don't you just cut all off? And I was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> you didn't want to go down the jet route and shave your head as well. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> like you would look good with a shaved head. So, <laughs> how much money did you raise? Tell us that, Grace. I ended up raising two thousand and twenty euro. Wow. Okay, that's a lot of money. Uh, fair, like seriously, incredible work and fair play to you. And you also danced somewhere as well. Yeah, um, I danced with Got the Dance Stage Skill. I um, sorry about that. Um, I danced with Got the Dance Stage Skill. So a couple of years ago, we danced in the Laurel Inn for all the children and just entertain them for the afternoon. Thank you. Uh, Laurel Inn does some incredible work. A friend of mine's daughter was in there for quite a while before she passed, and they they are a brilliant organisation. So thank you so much, Grace, for. Uh, for contributing to them and, and helping them. So, and uh, thank you for all that you do and congratulations. Thank you. Thanks Grace and Grace's family. Uh, okay, so we have our final winner, I think. Yeah, we have our final winner who is from Swords and uh, she is 16 year old Lauren Canty. Lauren? <laughs> Lauren, either your class likes you a lot or they were just waiting for the camera. I'm not sure which one it was. So Lauren, tell me a bit about uh, uh, tell me a bit about what you did, did during COVID. Uh, during COVID, I worked a lot with the Order of Malta and we did a lot of shopping runs and medication runs to old people and people that were too afraid to leave their house. And how how did you find it? How how were people when you 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 helped help them? They were really grateful because if it wasn't for us, they'd kind of be stuck in their house and they were happy to see other people as well and talk to other people. And I heard from your, your nomination that you were also working with your own family as well. 
Uh, yeah, my mom was high risk because she had a stroke last year. And uh, I was coming home to my high risk family and we're going out as well, working with the order model. That's some incredible work. I hope your mom's okay. Uh, <laughs> And she's getting better. Um, you also worked with Headstrong Wellbeing Committee. Tell me about a bit about that. Uh, last year when I was in TY, me and two other students uh, set up the Wellbeing Committee in our school, uh, which is the first time we ever set up the Wellbeing Committee and it's gone strong still. And, uh, how, and what, what, does it, what has it been doing? How, how has it been helping? Uh, every week, every once in a while we do something for the school or we have something on in the school for our wellbeing. And it's incredibly important during this time during COVID, I, I, I imagine. Yeah, it's very right. Well, a big congratulations to yourself, Lauren. Uh, amazing work. And I, I know you're still doing it. So incredible, uh, like fair play. And I have to say, well done. And well done to all your class there as well. So hello, class of Lauren. I hope you're all very proud of her. I know we are. So um, a big congratulations to all our winners, Dave, Jake, Shakira, Lauren, and Grace. You've all done an amazing job. And I know all our nominees that came in, there were, as I said, incredible stories all around. And everyone has been doing such a job, a great job to keep people going. And that's, that's what we need. We need the community going and we need to make sure to look out for each, uh, look out for each other. So it's great to hear that all of yourselves that have joined this call have have helped in some way and I have to say just well done and thank you so thank you from me and thank you from everyone here um, on the team and also thank you from from your parents your teachers and everyone so you'll all get a sculpture designed by Stephanie Hess and a hundred euro voucher and it will be on the way to you and all nominees will also receive a voucher and a Lord Mayor scroll, scroll as well and I want to say a big uh, thank you to everyone who joined the call a massive congratulations to all the winners I asked early on if anyone wants to give people a shout out we will spotlight you to to uh, uh, shout out to anyone if you want to put your hands up and uh, I have Joy Adikambi Baka and Siv uh, Shivano Hallen who, who would like to give a shout out to St. Paul's Secondary School I don't know if they're still online no oh okay and Jake Brannigan I have back Jake you have your hands up do you want to say something yeah I want to nominate me oh I want to uh, shout out my school. Go on. DBS St. James's primary school. Oh, secondary school. Well, DBS St. James's secondary school. Uh, a massive well done. And Jake says hello, and so do we. And also St. Paul's secondary school as well. And uh, we're going to go back to Grace. Um, I just want to shout out my school and uh, keep going. Community College and all the people who donated to the fundraiser as well. Share it to all them. Thank you, Grace, and like massive well done to your school. I know we also had someone here who wanted it. Shakira wanted. Shakira, do you want to come back in yourself, or do you want me to say it? Have you gone? Uh, well, Shakira wanted to say a shout out to amazing SNA Ashling for all the support she gave. She gave Shakira, and I hope Ashling is very, very proud because Shakira is an incredible uh, young woman. And we have uh, Dave who put up his hand as well, or was that a accidental hand, Dave Clark? <laughs> yes, <laughs> go for it, Dave. I'd like to shout out Sing Street CBS. <laughs> Yay, Sing Street CBS. <laughs> so, I'm presuming that's the school you're in. So, Okay, well, and a shout out of St. Paul's Principal Student Council and staff for making this our final year of fun and safe from Margaret O'Shea there. So a big thank you to everyone. And if you have any questions or any uh, thing that we can help with, please email me at lordmayor at dublincity.ie. That's lordmayor at dublincity.ie, whether it's your teachers or yourselves. If you have any questions for me, please contact me. More than happy to, to answer and help uh, if I can. And uh, a big, big congratulations to all our winners again. And thank you to your parents, your teachers for uh, uh, your support and especially yourselves for um, all that you've done. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.